Welcome everybody to my first show of this WWE vs AEW series. I'm going to be controlling Triple H's WWE and, and starting off with the August 5th Friday Night Smackdown. We kick things off with Adam Pearce, Sonya Deville, cutting a promo, running down everything happening on tonight's show, including a big time triple threat for the Smackdown Women's Championship between Liv Morgan, Charlotte Fair and Shayna Baszler. Up next we have Sami Zayn and Shinsuke Nakamura both laying claim to being Gunther's next Intercontinental Championship challenger as I try and kind of rebuild the division on high work great guys. This leads to a tag team match and 67 is pretty good rating. Gunther and Nakamura are carrying the match in terms of quality. Gunther picks up the win on Shinsuke Nakamura with one of his signature power bombs to advance the story. And this leads to Sami Zayn flipping out at the end of the match and beating down Shinsuke Nakamura. From here we have Chad Gable walking backstage and bumping into no, none other than Brock Lesnar. He says that he made some rookie mistakes this past weekend at SummerSlam. And with Chad Gable's training, he could be a champion again. We'll just have to wait and see how Brock Lesnar reacts to that later on. The cameras just happen to move down the corridor next, as we see one of the up-and-coming stars on the roster, Max Dupree, getting into a bit of an altercation with Drew Gulak, ridiculing him, saying that he is nothing but a joke on this roster. We then continue the build of the new heel Viking Raiders. Just picture a video package set at one of their Viking getaways. And then more hype for tonight's main event. Just little promo packages from each three women. Another good rating. Oh, big news. John Cena will be in action on my next Monday Night Raw 72 rating. Showing how over he still is. And once again, returning to the Intercontinental Championship picture, because I quite like how so far with Triple H, you've had one storyline getting multiple segments each week. He's interrupts a backstage interview with the Bloodline and sort of asks them for help with their sway. First singles match of the night, we have Pete Dunn defeat Ricochet. Yes, I did change his name back to Pete Dunn. Great in-ring performance from him too. Winning with a bitter end. Nice back and forth match. Sheamus then takes the mic and says that although he lost to Drew McIntyre, he will get himself added to the Clash at the Castle main event. Now we have the latest NXT call-ups, Julius Creed, Brutus Creed, the Creed brothers. They're brought out to the ring by Chad Gable, who we saw earlier and answer an open challenge that had been laid out by Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods. The Creed brothers pick up the shock upset victory with Brutus, Ken and Xavier Woods. Kofi carrying the match in ring. And this establishes them as a new act with Chad Gable putting in some good work at ringside. After the match, the trio start to beat down the New Day, but none other than Brock Lesnar comes to their aid and fights off the three athletes. Leaving the fans to question, did Brock Lesnar do it to help the New Day, or just because Chad Gable pissed him off? We then transition into our next match of the evening, Drew McIntyre versus Jey Uso. It was always going to be the highest rated match, and it's no surprise really. Drew McIntyre picking up the win with a future shot DDT. Both have great in ring performances, and it gets the crowd buzzing. After the match, the Bloodline come out to try and intimidate Drew with their numbers. However, the second tag team that has been called up tonight, Mustache Mountain, debut and even the odds. I think this is a perfect call-up and a feud for the Usos going into the UK pay-per-view. We then have the main event of the evening, Liv Morgan defending her Women's Championship successfully in a triple threat against Charlotte Flair and Shayna Baszler. 
You can see Charlotte did carry it in ring, but no one had a bad performance. Post match, the suspended Ronda Rousey jumps over the barricade and starts beating down Liv and Charlotte alongside Shayna Baszler. It seems they've finally joined forces. The show isn't over there, however, as Sasha Banks and Naomi make their return, scaring off Ronda and Shayna, but then Sasha picks up the women's championship as the show fades. So there we have it, my first show. And some brilliant segments and ratings here. 72 show, very happy with that. WWE. Hopefully better than AEW Rampage AW this Dynamite week. AEW can beat the so show rating. A good start. So we kick off the series. match. CM Punk against Daniel Garcia in the 65 rated segment. CM Punk 70, Daniel Garcia 43. They have a very good match. 12 minutes, CM Punk gets the win. A very good technical wrestling match. Then after that, Chris Jericho's music hits and he says, I want the AEW title. I want to be Le Champion again. And CM Punk says, hold on a minute. I just won a match. What have you done, Jericho? Hangman Page says, you face John Silver next, Chris Jericho. So we move on to Chris Jericho against John Silver. 52 segment rating, Jericho 53. John Silver 36, Chris Jericho gets the win with the Judas effect. Then after the match, Adam Page comes out and he says, you can both have title shots. And that AEW homecoming is going to be Adam Page versus Chris Jericho versus CM Punk for the AEW title. Massive match set there for about two weeks. And then after that, Brody King picks up the victory over Matt Hardy Brody King 30 Matt Hardy 44 so the match is going very nicely for Matt Hardy and then all of a sudden Malachi Blacks appears in the darkness and then Brody King gets the victory and after the match the Kings of the Black Throne start beating down on Matt Hardy and then Jeff Hardy comes out and makes the save 40 rated segment a lot of our stars don't have that high pop um, so we'll be editing some of it to make their uh, pop a bit better but yeah quite disappointing there with that angle but when I've edited the pops then hopefully we'll get a bit better and after that Tony Storm defeated Serena Deep in the 47 match it was very good considering their performances Tony Storm 42 Serena Deep 43 yeah, with, um, I'm going to push Tony. I think she's very good talent. Serena Deep, she's a good wrestler, but she's not that good on the mic, so I probably will not push her. So we go into the segment afterwards where Tony Storm, Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa all have a stare down and they all look at the AEW World Championship. And then FTR, defeat 2.0. Cash Wheeler 44, Dax Harwood 46, Jeff Parker 39, very good, Matt Lee 33, when FTR just pick up a win, I wanted to give him some momentum, and then after the match they say we want Swerve in our glory at AEW Homecoming, and Keith Lee looks at him and just says bask in our glory, 42 again disappointing but I've explained the reasons for these segments performances so hopefully they can get better and then afterwards Brian Danielson comes out to the ring he says I am the best wrestler in the world but then Kenny Omega's music hits and he says you was a big boy wrestler in a small pond but now you're a big time wrestler in a bigger pond I am Kenny Omega I run AEW you seen me around here I had an epic title run and I am the man to become the man you have to beat the man so you and me all out few weeks yes 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 Brian Danielson's reply is and then we have a tag match with Brian Cage and Wardlow defeat the acclaimed Brian Cage 52, Wardlow 37, and the acclaimed both 34 apiece. Again, 
Wardlow's unimportant. We need to edit his stats. He couldn't be on the show otherwise. Otherwise, it called down the crowd. We needed to get him on the show. He's our TNT champion. He deserves a boost. And we will see what happens next with Wardlow. And then in the main event, John Moxley picks up the victory in the 64 rated match. John Moxley 64, Kyle O'Reilly 47. Very good match there with John Moxley picking up the big win. And then after the match, Adam Cole and Bobby Fish come down to the ring and they start beating up John Moxley. Kyle O'Reilly is there too, but I didn't put him in the segment, I forgot. So yeah, the show goes off the air with Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish standing over John Moxley. And next week, we set up a match between Claudio Castelli, he's going to make his AEW debut. He's going to wrestle Bobby Fish on Dynamite next week. And the show rating... 67. So Monday night takes the victory in the first ever wars. So yeah guys, if you like the episode, smash the like button. I'm really hyped for this series. I think we've got some great, great shows and bookings coming up. And I hope to see you soon.